The focus today is going to be to look at programming constructs and structures. Now we've been doing programming for a while through our various different activities. So this will be a consolidation and a review of all of the techniques that you've learned so far. So if you worked with arrays, both 1D and 2D, you learned how to use stacks, queues, and linked lists, you know how to use variables, loop structures, all of that's going to be part of this topic. We're going to be looking at procedures and functions, and then we're going to look at how we reference them by value or by reference itself. So we're going to be looking at parameters as well. So nothing major, a basic review of all that you've learned so far. Most of the stuff will be something that you already know, and that's all there is to Unit 11. What you need to learn, though, is how you apply these skills to solve problems, and that happens through practice. So the more problem solving we do, the better you'll get at coding using these constructs. So let's start by looking at the key terms involved in this particular unit. You need to know what a parameter is, a variable applied to a procedure or function that allows it to be used by it. And how do you reference these parameters? You can reference them by value, where a method of passing the parameter to a procedure, where the value of the variable can't be changed by the procedure itself, so it stays as it is. Or you can do it by reference, which is a method of passing the parameter to a procedure where the value of the variable can be changed by the procedure itself. So you get something new back in return. You need to be aware of the header statement, which is normally the first statement of a procedure, which contains its name, any parameters that are passed to it, and if it's a function, what the return value is going to be. And you need to know the term argument, which is the value passed to a procedure or a function by the main program itself. So do pause the video and do jot these terms down. We'll be using that throughout this video and beyond. Now let's just have a review of the programming constructs that you're familiar with. You should be familiar with variables or identifiers. You should be able to initialize these in Python. You should be familiar with constants and how to assign values to these constant identifiers. Assignment, which is basically allocating the value to a variable. Name is equal to input. That's basically would be assignment. How to evaluate mathematical expressions, how to work out logic and or not, things like that. You also need to know the symbols of and or not, so double line for an or and and symbol, all of those kind of things come into play. You should know how an if else elif statement works in Python. You should be able to use count control loops like for, for in the range one comma ten in brackets, colon. Similarly, you should be able to use precondition loops like while in Python. And of course, Python doesn't have a repeat until loop, so you can't actually use it. However, you need to be aware of the pseudocode version of that. But do remember that we don't necessarily need to code it in Python. Now, most of these are pretty straightforward. So let's just jump into looking at procedures. Procedures tend to be repeated statements that can be grouped together with a common name, and they are called when needed in the main program. So basically, subroutines. Procedures often don't need to produce a result. They can just execute a bit of code, and that's it. In pseudocode, you'd probably be looking at a procedure, stars, and then you're going to simply say, well, this is going to have a parameter, which is going to be a number in integer form. That's the argument that's going to be passed to it from the main program at some point. So you define that in the header statement, and then you can put any code that you want in. Just remember that whenever you are writing a procedure in pseudocode, you need to write end procedure. However, when you write a definition in Python, you don't necessarily need to write an end definition at the end of it, because Python is clever enough to work that out. And then you obviously call the procedure. So in this case, we're going to call the stars procedure. And if you want to pass a parameter, we'll just put that in round brackets. And any integer in this case will go in. What if you type a different uh, data type, like a string? That can lead to a crash in the program. Now, procedures can use these parameters or arguments, if it's going for the main program, by ref or by val. And when by ref is used, you're using it by reference, its value can be changed by the procedure. When we use by val, that means we don't want to change the value 
of, of that parameter. Now in Python, all data is passed by value, so you can't really use by ref. However, in pseudocode, you will need to, so just be aware of that. Sometimes in exam questions, you'll see by ref, which basically means that that variable is going to be changed by the procedure. So in this case, you can see that the Celsius by ref temperature, which is real, is taken from the main program and then converted into a, a different kind. So perhaps Celsius is converted into Fahrenheit. So the original value of temperature is changed. Now functions, on the other hand, are repeating statements or calculations, just like procedures, but they always return a value to the main program. Functions themselves don't need to be called and they can be used directly. So the pseudocode you see on screen creates a function which is a substring function which uses a string and a couple of integers and then returns a string value and that's all defined in the header statement. You've got a bit of code and then just like procedures you've got to write end function at the end of that. Now you don't necessarily need to do that in a definition in Python but you need to do that in pseudocode. Another function is the Celsius function where the temperature is taken in and the Fahrenheit value is returned back to the main program and that means that you return a real value back. Just be aware that you can't change the data type of what you're returning. It has to be one of those parameters that you've imported into a function. So just be very, very careful with that. Otherwise, these are pretty straightforward. Now let's look at the header. Both procedures and functions have a header statement and that's normally will have the name of the procedure or the function and then in brackets there will be parameters which will normally be in by ref or by val format and then in the case of a function there will definitely be a return value. You can't write that next to a procedure but make sure that when you write a function there's normally a return value that's specified. Now when using procedures or functions or when you're calling them from the main program the arguments that you're going to be passing to the function or the procedure have to be in the same order as the ones specified in the header statement. So you can't simply send the start and the length first and then the my string. They have to be in the order of my string, start and length. So just be aware of that. Now another thing to be aware of is that there is no case statement in Python, yet there is a case statement in pseudocode. You need to be aware of how case statements can be used in pseudocode and in Python, you need to convert them into an if statement because it doesn't care much about case. So case statements in pseudocode are normally written in the form of capital case, choice of a choice is your variable, and then you simply say one, two, three, four, whatever the different cases are. So in the case of, in this case, the integer one outputs routine one, the integer two entered will output routine two, three, will output routine three and four to six will output routine not written. 10 is your exit condition. Otherwise, which is kind of like your else statement, you output incorrect choice. So you're only allowed to enter one to 10. You could do all of this with an if statement, but case allows you to branch multiple conditions together and just gives you a different way of solving problem. Now let's look at some questions. What are the kind of questions you might get? Well, in paper one, you're going to get something like procedures and functions are subroutines. Explain what is meant by a procedure, what's meant by a function, a parameter, a procedure or function header, and these are all definition-based ones. So if you have gone through the video, hopefully you've been jotting down these definitions, what a procedure, what a function, what a parameter, what a header statement is, and you can use those to answer these type of questions. So do pause the video and go through these questions and jot the answers down. Another type of question you're going to get is explain the difference between procedures and functions. What happens? What's the difference between passing parameters by value and by reference? How do you go about defining a procedure? And how do you go about calling a procedure? How do you go about defining a function perhaps? And how do you go about calling a function? So all of those kind of things come into play, the practical side of it, but you need to write the answers in descriptive form. Another type of question that will come up is incomplete pseudocode or maybe you're given a context and you need to write the pseudocode. So in this case, a driver buys a new car, the value of the car reduces each year by a percentage of the current value. So you're kind of working out some kind of compound depreciation. 
you're given partial pseudocode and you need to complete it. So again, these type of questions are very easy to do if you have practice, but if you don't have practice and you haven't coded or understood pseudocode, these can be a bit tricky. So perhaps pause the video and go through these set of questions and share your answers with me. That's all for today. Hopefully you understood the difference between procedures and functions and the difference between by val and by ref. In addition, you understood how header statements are written, how functions and procedures are called, and the order of arguments is just as important and has to be exactly the same as what you defined in the header statement. In addition to that, hopefully there was a good review of all of the constructs that we're used to, variables, constants, selection, iteration, and even things like case statements and repeat and how they differ in pseudocode and in Python they don't exist. We've gone through all of that. If you do have any questions, as usual, feel free to get back to me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson.